Hello and welcome to the inside of the new Kia Sportage. My name is Chiro De Siena. This is the Cars of Cozy YouTube channel and I'm excited to tell you all about this new car because really, I mean it, this is one of the best looking modern cars that I've seen in a long time. Congrats to Kia for going a bit out of the box, making something look really interesting for a change. Looks like nothing else on the road. So the outside's nice, the inside's very nice, but is it 734,000 rands worth of nice? Let's find out. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Now, while you can get into a new Sportage for 539,000 Rand, there are five variants to choose from, and I am in number five of five, the very top spec GT Line S, which, as I mentioned, goes for 734,000 Rand. Now, that puts it at the very top end of this very competitive segment, and I think this car actually now has fewer rivals than it did before because of how much spec they've thrown in and where the price point is now. So a couple of technical elements first. This car and the Hyundai Tucson are basically the same car underneath. However, different engine in the Kia range, only one engine to choose from. It's a 1.6 turbo. In this car, it's mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It's a punchy motor, over 130 kilowatts, very decent torque, actually some of the best specs in the segment from any motor that you can choose from and so I have no problems with the drivetrain in terms of the way it feels the way it drives it's very smooth it's very refined the suspension is maybe slightly on the firmer side but nothing no deal breaker I could totally live with it I think for the purposes of this review, I'm going to compare this car to a brand new rival in the form of the Nissan Qashqai because that is also a fancy new, new generation compact SUV and it's also an absolute technological tour de force and full of options, especially at the top spec. But right off the bat though, this car is still about 70,000 Rand more than the top spec Nissan Qashqai. So, what are you getting for your money? Well, let's start with what's in the cabin. So six airbags, very nice safety spec, all the active safety as well, stability control, EBD, ESC. So on the safety side, very decently specced. And then on the comfort side, well, yeah, they've pretty much thrown everything at this. And just in terms of the materials used and the quality of everything around me, I mean, I've got this lovely Alcantara on the doors and the seats are leather and up here it's just this really quality roof lining and the steering wheel is just really beautiful quality and design as well. I think they've absolutely knocked it out of the park in terms of the interior actually. Probably one of the better designed and better feeling interiors that I've come across in a long time at, well, anything under a million rand. But I would say that this car is now not really what we've come to know Kia to be. For me, Kia's always been a very good value brand. Their cars weren't too premium. They came in, say, just below things like Volkswagen Tiguan's, for instance, in terms of interior spec and design. But now it's competing right at the very top and it's got the associated price to go with it. So that 1.6 turbo, it's nice and powerful, but it does mean you'll use a bit more fuel, although not too much. Kia claims 6.5 to the 100, and in the 1.3 turbo in the Nissan, they claim 6.1 to the 100. So it's not a huge fuel penalty. Welcome to the interior of the Kia Sportage. 
probably one of the best interiors I've seen in a car in a long time. Just really well put together, really nicely designed, very pretty to look at, very modern. But I recommend keeping one of these because all of these lovely piano black surfaces just get full of fingerprints and dust and all the rest of it. But gosh, it really, really is pretty. And in this top spec GT Line S version, you do get all the toys. So you get heated and ventilated seats as well as a heated steering wheel, which feels a little bit unnecessary in South Africa. You can see they've gone to the sort of dial thing that a few manufacturers have adopted to uh, change from reverse neutral drive and park. But I have to show you this, one of my favorite pieces of design innovation that I've seen in a car in a long time. So you see this panel down here, it's actually dual purpose and so are these knobs. So right now it's in climate mode, but if I hit that little button, I get the menu mode and then I can jump between all the different features of the infotainment system. Now you don't get nav, but you do get all the rest of the connectivity that you would be expecting. And then this knob in this mode becomes volume, but then you flick it back to aircon, it becomes temperature. I love that. It's so simple and so brilliant. I haven't seen something so cool like that in a car in a really, really long time. Now, as I mentioned, I think a great rival for this car is the new Nissan Qashqai. They're both very technologically advanced and at the upper end of the pricing for their segment. So I'm going to compare the top spec GT Line S that I'm sitting in to the top spec Qashqai Center Plus. Yes, that's what it's called. Right. I've made some notes, quite extensive. So both cars have six airbags, including curtain airbags with stability control and EBD. In the Sportage, you get this really nice panoramic roof with a blind that is in a real hurry. Look at that, that's, that's quite, a, it's quite a quick blind that. Both cars have automatic lights, both cars have high beam assist, which is really nice. The Kia has voice control, the Nissan doesn't. The Nissan, however, has surround view cameras, whereas the Kia only has a rear camera. The Nissan has nav, the Kia doesn't. The Sportage has keyless access. In the Nissan, you have to hit the button, but it does have a start button once you're in the car. Uh, both have adaptive cruise control, with active cruise control which steers between the lanes as well both have auto wipers both have blind spot warnings the kia has an electric tailgate which the nissan doesn't have and the kia has heated and ventilated seats whereas the nissan only has heated both however do have leather and then when it comes to towing capacity the kia is a bit better off it'll tow 1650 kilograms whereas the nissan will tow 1200 kilograms so that is what you are getting for your money but i really do want to communicate as strongly as I can how cool and how impressive this interior is and I hope that it comes across on camera. The front seats are a nice place to be, but so are the back seats with quite a few convenient features. So you've got USB-C ports built right into the back of the seat, one here and then one there. And then you can control this backrest of this seat, actually the whole seat, you can slide it forward with these buttons on the side. So you can make more space for yourself as the rear passenger. That is quite nice. Good leg room. I mean, probably not the biggest in the segment, but it's decent enough for adults. You've got two drinks holders in here, and then importantly, a proper third safety belt for the center passenger. And then this big panel roof just adds to the sort of feeling of space and air in the back seat. It's actually a really nice place to be. Oh, and there's heated seats. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. This is very much a family car, so it needs a family sized boot, which I would say it just sort of scrapes in. It's about the right size. Definitely a bit smaller than something you'd get in, say, the Toyota RAV4, but I think it will pass. However, will it pass our standard cooler box test? I think this is going to be tight, I'm not going to lie. Let's see. Oh, that is close. But it's good, it's in, it has passed. So there we go, that's about a, maybe about a six cooler box boot, maybe five, one, two, three, four, five. But 
there are a couple more nice features let's get this out of the way so south africans always like to know that there is a full-size spare even with an alloy wheel that's expensive but imagine how much extra boot space you'd have if you could get rid of that but you probably don't want to you do get this nice rubberized mat that's really sticky that's a nice touch and then i always appreciate this remote seat release so you don't have to go around to the side of the car to drop the seats look at that fully flat load area this obviously comes out which is cool and then there's a 12 volt socket over there and a nicely placed light so that you can see what's happening in here at night time yeah that's a good boot i think I've been keeping an eye on this segment of the market because it's a really important segment. It's very busy, very competitive, lots of sales. And it seems increasingly to me that if you want your car to be as good as the top end of the competition, anything, say, from Germany, for instance, it just seems like it's going to carry a certain price point. And is that what South African wants? Are we looking for adaptive cruise control in cars in the segment and i suppose you don't have to have it you could go for a cheaper model but i'm not sure the cars need to be this expensive what i can say confidently though is that this car is as good if not better in some ways than anything the german competition can throw at it and i think in that way it does justify its price tag and also wrapped up in that price point is a very decent warranty. So you've got five year unlimited kilometer warranty in here with a very impressive six year, 150,000 kilometer service plan, which as far as I can tell is one of the best service plans on the market in South Africa. Now, if you compare that to say the Nissan, it's also a very strong warranty, six year, 150,000 kilometer warranty, but the service plan is half, three year, 90,000. So you're getting a lot of cover here, which is always a nice feeling. Now, if you jump across to its sister brand, Hyundai, then you get that, that seven year warranty, which is quite nice, but remember it's just a five plus two, but all of this is just vastly superior to cars like the VW and the Toyota, which only come as standard with a three year warranty. Although in their defense, it's not that expensive to extend the warranty on those cars. In terms of the driver aids, you've got pretty much everything at your disposal here. So you've got high beam assist, so you don't have to worry about your high beams. You've got auto lights on, auto wipers on. All these little things just make for a much more relaxed driving experience. But the really impressive tech, and you also do find this in the cash guide, but you have to pay a lot more for it in some of its rivals, and some of its rivals not even available, and that is the lane center keeping and the adaptive cruise control. So the radar, keeps an eye on the cars in front and will actively brake or accelerate the car to maintain a safe distance. And then the steering system steers between the lines, assuming it can see clear lines, which on the highway is usually not a problem in my experience. And while you can't just, you know, sort of like lay back and pretend like you're on a sun lounger, you do have to keep your hands on the wheel. But what it does do is it reduces the need for constant little inputs that the driver has to make to keep the car going in a straight line at high speed. And in that way, it reduces driver fatigue and it makes long distance touring in a car like this really very pleasant. So where does the Sportage fit into the market for me? Well, I, I've been driving this car for a while now and really struggling to find something I don't like about it or something that I can sit here and tell you oh, that could be better or this could have been better really the only question here is can you spring for the price sorry that was the lane keep assist at 734,000 yeah you're you're paying German money here for a Korean car but as I said it's as good if not better than, than those sorts of rivals. And yes, the Chinese have come in and you can get a Cherry Tigo 8 or a Haval H6, especially the Haval, which has very similar spec to this, for about 150,000 Rand less. But from its more established rivals, the price point is maybe a little bit higher than, than some of the competition. 
Maybe the only downside here might be that it seems a little bit thirsty during our testing, but that's also just down to the way you drive as well. There's just not much I don't like about this car. The, the drivetrain refinement is excellent. The quality of materials is excellent. I love the look of it. It feels very well screwed together. The warranty is very comprehensive. I don't see what's not to like here, to be honest. <laughs> I'd be very happy to date you this car. It's a luxurious five-seater family runaround. So I hope, I hope, I hope that helps. <laughs>Thanks for watching. Now, did you know that Cars.Coza has a brilliant app? It's actually one of the most popular apps in South Africa, and that's because it's actually really bloody good to use. You can save your favorites. So while you're shopping, you know, if you're taking a couple of weeks to shop, you just save your favorites so you don't lose them. And it's also a brilliant way of finding new car specs and pricing. It's incredibly detailed. I use it all the time. The link to the app is in the description below. You can get it on iOS and Android and it's in the Huawei app gallery, I think it's called. Yes, that is what it's called. Cool. Alrighty. And I'm done. Good. Okay. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Cars.coza.